Hello and welcome to My Security TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the Executive Editor with My Security Media. And today we're joined by Dave Monsell, Chief Executive Officer with Haven Tech. They've just raised US $10 million for a US expansion. It's an Australian startup success story for cybersecurity. So really pleased to have David Monsell with us. And let me bring him on now. Dave, thanks for, very much for joining us. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Great. Uh, and yeah, you've gone through uh, a number of uh, sort of transitions, the company. We have been sort of following the story uh, since you were founded 2015. And this is a big one, Macquarie Group. And uh, I don't have the other one in front of me, but you've got a couple of funders in the background there for you. And you're expanding into the US. That's right. We had a successful raise during uh, during the course of the year coincide with both the platform being at a point where we we're ready to scale and the need to raise the market's awareness of what we're doing. We identified the major opportunity for the business was the US marketplace and we secured funding from a number of eager investors to be part of uh, the next wave of Haven Tech's journey. But you've been, have you not had, have you got some existing clients in the US? You've, you've been sort of knocking on the door over there for a while and maybe that'll bring us into what you've been doing with Cyber and sort of the backing there. But yeah, you would have been to the RSA conferences in the past and, and a few bits and pieces over there. That's right. So at the moment, all of our clients are focused here in the Australian marketplace. We've got some of our clients that have got operations in Europe and the starting of the team in the States this year is all focused on acquiring the first of our American clients. We've successfully completed uh, integration partnership, uh, an integration partnership with Microsoft. We're now a Microsoft passwordless uh, multi-factor authentication partner for their Azure platform. Right. We're looking to you know, raise the market's awareness both here and in the US of that particular offering. Well, maybe talk us through the products. I think maybe that's the first thing because just in case no one's heard, heard of Haven Tech yet, uh, we do have a US audience uh, as well, and this will go out as a Cybersecurity Weekly podcast. But yeah, just talk us through, you've got two sort of key product platforms that you deal with. That's right. You mentioned uh, at the start, the business was founded back in 2015 and was founded with the primary purpose or because of the fact that most technologies were providing inadequate protection to sensitive information. And over the course of uh, the last five to six years, HavenTech has built, patented and validated a platform that protects sensitive information. The two products on the platform, HavenTech Authenticate, uh, provides protection to digital identities and passwords. And HavenTech Sanctum is our data protection solution. And it provides, you know, as the label says, uh, protection to an enterprise's uh, data assets. Nice thing about the two products is if your digital identity is protected by Authenticate and your data is protected by Sanctum, when your enterprise or its cloud is breached, there's nothing of value to steal. And it, it's the decentralized part or the deconstruction part of the storage. Maybe talk to, did they both come together or did it start with Authenticate? Is that where it started and how, how are the two formed or have they been running alongside from the start? So the, 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 the primary product was Haven to Authenticate. Uh, yeah. Sanctum followed about a year later from a development perspective. Got it. Both of the products are in market, ready to use now, and are being used by customers uh, right now. But yes, Authenticate was uh, the first of the products that we launched on the platform. And you, you have had some backing from the sort of the federal government. You've had some project funding grants from the Australian Cybersecurity Growth Network. And I think maybe it was two, two or three years ago, your e-consent uh, project with uh, Genomics was also an interesting announcement. So yeah, you're coming, I would suggest what I'm coming from is a, a good pedigree. You've, you've been sort of founding and doing some interesting projects and really betting down the product. That's right. I mean, we've, we've got, had great support from the Australian government through OzCyber during the course of the past 18 months of the development of our e-consent solution. That actually used a combination of both Authenticate and Sanctum to put a patient or a, or a customer at the centre of the experience for sharing their genomics sequence. And we do that in a way that, again, if uh, our client's enterprise is ever breached, that genomics information and the digital identity associated with that um, genomics uh, information cannot be stolen. Very clever piece. We finished it finished that project about a month ago. Right. 
and we're looking forward to a couple of launch announcements early in the calendar year. Very nice. It, does that potentially open you up to a, a US market in that? It's almost a, a good COVID story. I think it was, as, as, as that was rolling out as well, I think it was around 2020 that it was coming out. Yeah, we, we believe so. We believe be, beyond health, but just the, the general push by regulators for consumer data rights and essentially giving us control over our personal and private information and putting us at the centre of who can use it for what purpose. We think, you know, beyond health data, but credit data, financial services data in the Australian, uh, the US and even the European marketplace that that offering is going to be uh, relevant. And maybe just talk, the other one was uh, Future Now Capital. So it's Macquarie Group and Future Now Capital uh, have predominantly funded this. I take it they'll assist you into the market too. What is, what is your strategy in the US? Maybe some a bit of advice for Australian other, uh, other Australian startups, uh, even not in the cybersecurity realm. But what is your what is your strategy there uh, to break into the US market for next year? So interesting. The strategy for the raise was not just about raising the capital, but what could those investors bring in the context of a network to introduce us yep. to partners that could amplify our ambition. And we've certainly got that in both Macquarie Bank and Future Now. And in actual fact, Future Now have been pivotal in the work that we've got now going on with Microsoft here in Australia and in the US. And that US story, and that's a big part of our plan, certainly in the States. While we'll go direct into the market here in Australia and the US, the primary opportunity and the primary focus for us in the States is to have our solution integrated into complementary solutions like the commercial identity and access management solutions the big focus of the team uh, in the us is building out those partnerships and the first one is the microsoft one which we uh inked last month and i take it your customer take up and feedback has been happy the authenticate you use a, a four digit pin and a biometric are they working together or you have a choice between the two you have a choice between the two. You have a four-digit pin also as a fallback should the biometric fail. Um, what we're seeing across, certainly from a user experience perspective, is that multi-factor authentication is important. Uh, but customers are reminding us on a regular basis they want simplicity. Even Nord passes, you know, 10 most common passwords in Australia. The insight there is people like simple passwords. They mm. want to use something that's simple to remember to get access to their digital services. We think by supplying them with something as simple as a four digit pin or a biometric and under the covers, we do a one time use multi factor authentication. We give them what they answer, convenience and simplicity when you turn up to your digital front door and our technology provides the multi factor protection under the covers. They don't need to go and get a one time password. They don't need to do anything else. Just as simple as a four digit pin or biometric. I see 84600s on your website as well. You've So finance and health seems to be two strong uh, sort of verticals for you. Are you sticking to those or what other verticals do you find that this can be applied to? Really, really proud of the role we play at 86400. We are the authentication solution in there. And certainly from a business perspective, we're focused on the more regulated sectors in the marketplace, so financial services, uh, health, and also into government. More broadly, though, the technology is applicable to any industry sector that is storing sensitive information on behalf of their customers and wants to protect it, uh, you know, in, in the instance where that organisation is ever breached. But we're certainly, from an industry perspective, we are focusing on financial services, health and government, and that's where we're seeing a lot of interest for what we do. Maybe introduce us to Jordan Blair, who's going to lead up your US team, and Joseph Wendland your BDM over there in North America. What's their backgrounds and how do you see their roles? So both uh, Jordan and Joseph came from cybersecurity backgrounds. In actual fact, uh, previous success working in another Australian uh, cyber business that was scaling into the US marketplace, that being Secure Code Warrior. We are introduced to uh, both of the team up there they fitted the bill, they had a great connection, but they also had a real experience in activating channel partners and technology partners, which is such an important part of our US growth, US growth story. Yeah. Are you are you going through the channel? You're gonna be 100% channel? So we're definitely the focus is channel. Um, 
that said, uh, there are a couple of opportunities that we do have in our pipeline which will be direct. In longer term, for the startup, fintech, and even some of the scale-up sector, we will be looking at direct offer. In actual fact, a lot of the work that we're doing at the moment is around zero code integration, self-service deployment, improved reporting for both of the services to allow uh, more fintechs the ability to easily consume our services without the need for a whole lot of technology horsepower. And that direct offering will continue to drift into the marketplace during the early part of next calendar year. But more broadly for us, the larger opportunity is via channel, professional services, technology partners, uh, identity and access management partners. Uh, that's where the opportunity is for us. Great. Well, maybe how, how have you found COVID the last couple of years? This is, uh, has it allowed you to sort of work on the product as well or get, you know, how what impact has that been? And maybe we'll finish off with your outlooks for 2022, obviously looking good from a company perspective, but business-wise, uh, in terms of the general COVID business environment, it doesn't look too bad for you? No, not at all. In actual fact, um, what, what's been rather unfortunate is this particular period over the last 18 months, other than obviously what's going on more broadly from a health perspective, it has provided opportunities for uh, more organisations to get unauthorised access to sensitive information. Mm. It's been a reminder to certainly a lot of our clients that they needed to be doing, we need to be looking for technology that didn't defend sensitive information, but that genuinely protected it. And, and whether it's COVID or you know something else over the years to come, I think the broader trend towards the use of sensitive information, even immutable data sets for organisations that are looking to digitally engage with their employees and their customers is going to increase. And technology like ours that protects that information on both sides of the firewall while providing a user experience that uh, improves accessibility and drives adoption is going to be key. And that's why our outlook is uh, optimistic uh, over the next couple of years. Very good. Well, look, um, what about Europe? The release was mentioning uh, the US market, but you've already mentioned you've got customers in Europe. Is uh, that also as part of your expansion? So that is, uh, we were another one of the achievements this year, we were fortunate to be part of the initial cohort of the Investment New South Wales Go Global program into the UK. Uh, we're right. fact, we are working with a business development partner in the UK uh, right now on a couple of opportunities for banks. And we plan to use that data as a means to inform how we go about opening up uh, UK slash European business, but in the following financial year. So we, what we want to do is we want to get uh, support the US team, get a head of steam in the US, uh, con continue to execute on a strategy as it relates to awareness in the US. And with the team then at a point now where they can start to run that plan, our focus, certainly from a management team perspective here in the Australian marketplace, will then turn to Europe. Very nice. What, what's your thoughts on, as we mentioned, you've been getting some support. You know, you just mentioned the New South Wales investment um, program as well. You're happy with the amount of support you've had as a startup uh, and the outlook there. Any advice for other startups and scale ups? We've been, we've been exceedingly, we feel exceedingly proud of and uh, somewhat humbled by the support we've got. The taking out the Australian Technologies Competition win uh, this year for Cyber and then following that up with the uh, Innovation, uh, Innovation Oz Award for Cyber as well this year. Very proud of that, very proud of the support that we got both from, from both of those entities. Uh, I mentioned Investment New South Wales and the Go Global program, but I'd also like a shout out to Austrade, who have been fantastic in helping us with our US plans. We've been included in the Weave program up there, which runs during the course of next uh, calendar year. And we're continuing to see very strong support uh, from Austrade and the federal government. How's the, uh, the mar I see, um, is it Rick Richardson? Uh, Richardson? Uh, he's yep. one of the co-founders. Uh, how what was the strategy maybe again have you had must have been having offers to you know, acquisition and you know to take on of this is this been a sort of a longer term vision from the founders of where it's at uh this is where they wanted to take it 
Look, I think the founders and the shareholders, uh, if the right offer comes along and it's good for the business and it's good for the sector and it's good for our clients, we'll certainly look at it. At the moment, though, the plan is to is to grow what we what we think is a genuinely Australian innovation and look to take advantage of the opportunity that's going to be presented over the next couple of years uh, to grow our business in Australia, the States, and also into the UK and Europe. And if a partner comes along that says, um, we'd like you to be part of our family and the offer looks good, I know the board will give it a, a serious listen. Well, that's a good one to finish off with. I think uh, if you're interested, go and have a chat to uh, to Dave here and uh, the CEO of Haventac. They've just raised $10 million with Future Now Capital and Macquarie Group. They're heading over to the US. Maybe watch out for them in Europe uh, and the UK not too long after that. But thank you very much. Uh, we've been joined by Dave Monsell, Chief Executive Officer with Haventech. Dave, thanks so much for your time today and best of success for 2022. Thank you. And likewise as well, Happy New Year, everyone. And uh, love to hear from you in 2022. Great work. Well, uh, definitely one to watch, mate. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot.